Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. We are on our journey learning about muscles. I hope uh, last week treated you well, looking at our larger muscles of our lower extremities. This week we're getting smaller, so we're gonna start with some large muscles of our shoulder and our arm, but then we're gonna get into some pretty small detailed muscles in our forearm and our hand. Before we begin, let's distinguish between the arm and the forearm as we did with our thigh and our leg. Our arm, or the brachial region, is from our shoulder to our elbow. Our forearm is from our elbow to our wrist, okay? So that arm is our proximal portion. Remember, we have our humerus deep to these muscles. and our forearm, we have our radius and our ulna. Now remember, with these muscles, if you see that asterisk, you are gonna be required to know the origin and the insertion. But all muscles, you'll need to know an action, and you'll also need to be able to identify a synergist and antagonistic muscles to these. Our first muscle, really big muscle on our backs here, is our trapezius. We can see that this has a giant origin. Our posterior occipital bone, so this is gonna help draw back that head. The ligamentum nuchae, or the nuchal ligament, right in here. And then C7 through T12, so the spinous processes of C7 down through T12, all the way down here. Now, the uh, insertions, you can see that all these muscle fibers come over here to our scapular spine and around to our clavicle and the acromion process. So these are gonna help extend and abduct our head, rotate, adduct, and even fix our scapula. Our deltoid muscle, we can see is this triangular shaped muscle here. Our origin then, we can see our clavicle, the acromion process, and some of that spine of our scapula. And all of those fibers are going to then insert down here to that deltoid tuberosity. Now think about a really large origin and all of these muscle fibers converging on this one point on our humerus. So this is gonna put a lot of force on that deltoid tuberosity and allow us a lot of different actions on our humerus. So abducting, flexing, extending, medially and laterally rotating the arm. So you might say, well, how is this flexing and extending? Or how is it medially and laterally rotating the arm? Well, if you think about these muscle fibers, if you have muscle fibers that are contracting posteriorly, these are going to help extend our arm. But if your muscle fibers anteriorly are contracting, you're going to flex that arm. Now we have two different muscles here. So our first is our pectoralis major, and this is our muscle over on the left. Again, a really large origin here. So our clavicle, sternum, and cartilages along ribs one through seven, and a smaller insertion on the crest of that greater tubercle on our humerus. Again, a lot of force on that insertion, so that's gonna give us a lot more power in our arms. This muscle is responsible for flexing, adducting, and medially rotating our arm. And over here on the right, we see the pectoralis minor. The pectoralis minor is deep to our pectoralis major. It can depress the scapula and even raise our ribs three through five. All right, another posterior big muscle we have is our latissimus dorsi. We have this giant origin running from T7 down to S5, our iliac crest, and our ribs 10 through 12, and that insertion comes up here and onto our intertubercular groove of our humerus. Again, large origin, small insertion, lots of power. Let's digest this for a little bit, work with some of your models, look at some of your diagrams, and start working through these really big muscles. Welcome back, hope that went fairly well for you. Let's move on and look a little bit deeper into our shoulder. 
So here we are looking at our clavicle and our scapula here. And so here's that anterior view. Here's our posterior view. We can see our scapular spine here. We know that there's the supra spinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa and our subscapular fossa. So hopefully you're remembering that from our appendicular lecture. Now we have our rotator cuff muscles. So our rotator cuff muscles, there are four muscles involved with this rotator cuff. Supraspinatus, which we can see here. So the supraspinatus is sitting in the supraspinous fossa infraspinatus sitting in our infraspinous fossa teres minor right here and our subscapularis now a way to remember these is sits supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis these muscles all help hold the uh, humerus into that glenoid cavity of the scapula so these are really important muscles because they're holding our arms on now let's look a little bit closer at some of these muscles first is our supraspinatus uh, we can see that right here at the end of our arrow our origin is that supraspinous fossa the insertion is the greater tubercle of the humerus and this is going to help abduct the arm and helps to stabilize our shoulder joint our infraspinatus is going to laterally rotate our arm and stabilize our shoulder joint. Subscapularis is going to medially rotate our arm and stabilize our shoulder joint. Now back to a posterior view, we can see teres minor right here. Uh, this muscle is going to laterally rotate adduct the arm and help stabilize the shoulder joint and then we have teres major inferior to the teres minor and this is again going to extend adduct and medially rotate our arm so it has a lot of the same movements and actions that we saw with our rotator cuff muscles but this is not part of the rotator cuff it doesn't actually attach to the capsule of that shoulder joint where the other four muscles do. So uh, this is why teres major, even though it has the same actions, isn't considered a rotator cuff muscle. So again, let's digest that for a few minutes, and then we'll move on here with some more muscles. Welcome back, folks. Let's look at some muscles in our arms. So our first is our biceps brachii here in green we can see that we have two heads of the muscle. Remember biceps, so we have two, and then brachii for brachium. Our origin is the superior margin of our glenoid fossa and our coracoid process of the scapula. Now the insertion, you can see, comes down here to our radial tuberosity, and so we're going to be crossing our shoulder joint and our elbow joint. So we'll see that this flexes our arm, but it also flexes our forearm, and it even helps with supination of the hand. Our triceps brachii then is posterior, and we have three heads. We have the long head, the lateral head, and the medial head. So we can see that our long head uh, originates at that infraglenoid tuberosity of the scapula. The lateral head is coming off of that lateral surface of our humerus. And the medial head, which we don't see in this view, is coming off of the posterior surface of our humerus. And they are going to insert to that olecranon process and the tuberosity of our ulna. So that's going to extend our arm, but it also adducts and extends our forearm. Coracobrachialis, we can see up here our chromium and our humerus here. This muscle is going to flex and adduct our arm. Our brachialis muscle helps to flex our forearm. And our brachioradialis, a little bit more distal on that humerus, flexes our forearm. So again, these muscles are crossing that elbow joint and they're acting on that forearm. 
So take a few minutes, look over the muscles of the arm. See you here in a little bit. So far, we're doing good. We're hanging in there. We've learned about our shoulder. We've learned about our arm muscles. Now let's get into the tricky part, the muscles of the forearm. So some terminology that will likely be helpful for you. Thinking about digitorum. So digitorum is inserting onto our digits. Carpi is going to insert onto our carpal bones. So when we think about a digitorum muscle, we're going to be thinking about flexing or extending the fingers. If we see carpi, we should be thinking about flexing or extending our wrists. Pollicis, remember our pollux there, uh, we're going to have muscles inserting onto our thumb. Radialis is going to tell us that it's on the radial side, and ulnaris tells us that's on the ulnar side. We talked about the retinacula when we were looking at the muscles of the legs, and we said those were like rubber bands that act as fulcrum. Now those are bands of connective tissue that are helping to contain or hold those tendons together. And so with carpal tunnel syndrome, we can see that we have these tendons that are going deep uh, through this carpal tunnel. So basically our tunnel around our wrists between the retinaculum and those carpal bones. And so with a long uh, time typing or you know, really fine motor skills or doing really fine movements with our fingers, we can get inflammation in that tissue and that's what can lead to pain and numbness. We'll start off with the supinator. I love the term supinator. It's like kind of reminds me of terminator or maybe the person who makes soup in a soup shop. Here we need to know the origin and insertion. So the origin of our muscle here is the lateral epicondyle of our humerus and that anterior ulna. And it's going to insert on our proximal radius. So it's a smaller muscle. And what is this doing? Well, it is supinating our hand. So remember, we're holding a bowl of soup here. Now our pronator quadratus is on that distal end of our forearm and it's going to pronate our hand so it's an antagonist to our supinator and then we also have pronator teres pronator teres is proximal it has an origin at the medial epicondyle of our humerus and the coronoid process of the ulna we have the lateral and middle shaft of the radius, uh, which is our insertion point, and that's going to help pronate the hand. What you'll also notice is this muscle crosses our elbow joint, so it does play a role in flexing that forearm. But again, it would be more of a synergistic muscle rather than a prime mover. Now moving to some of the superficial muscles of our anterior form. So again, go into anatomical position and think about our anterior form. First, we have palmaris longus. Palmaris longus originates at the medial epicondyle of our humerus. It's going to insert to the palmar aponeurosis. Remember, this is a non-bony attachment. It's a thick ligament here. And not everybody has one of these muscles, which is kind of interesting. This does help flex our hand. So what we'll see with muscles in our anterior forearm, they're generally flexors. Okay, so they're going to flex digits and they're going to flex our hand. Flexor carpi radialis. So the muscle that's flexing, that's inserting to the, to the carpal bones, and it's on the radial side of our forearm. So it's going to flex and abduct our hand. Our flexor carpi ulnaris is going to flex and adduct the hand. Let's continue on our voyage of muscles of our forearm. We're still on the anterior side of our forearm. So our first muscle, the flexor digitorum, superficialis. So the origin of our flexor digitorum superficialis, the medial epicondyle of our humerus, proximal ulna and the radius, and it's going to insert on those middle phalanges 
um, two through five. So we're not isolating that pollux, just the fingers here. So we're gonna flex our proximal and middle phalanges and we're going to flex our hand. Flexor digitorum profundus, we see that over here. This is a little bit deeper to our flexor digitorum superficialis, and this is going to flex our phalanges and flex our hand. Flexor pollicis longus, so this is going to flex our thumb, right? It's going to insert onto that pollux. Now let's look at some smaller muscles that exist within our hand. So these are going to be intrinsic muscles. First, we have flexor pollicis brevis. So this muscle is going to flex. It's inserting to the pollux, and it has a short body. So flexor pollicis brevis. Uh, it's going to flex our thumb. We have abductor pollicis brevis, and so this is going to abduct our thumb. And then we have opponent's pollicis. This muscle it originates on the trapezium, inserts to the first metacarpal, and it's going to oppose our thumb. Here's that review and reinforce slide. Pause your video. Take some time for yourself to work through some of those muscles. Welcome back, everyone. Let's now turn to the posterior compartment of our forearm. And we'll start here with our extensor carpi radialis longus. Whoa, that's a mouthful. Extensor, so it's going to extend. Carpi, our carpals, so it's extending our wrist here because it's going to insert on those carpals. Radialis, it's on the radial side, and longus, it is a longer body than if it were a brevis. So here we can see this in green, it's extending and abducting our hand. Extensor carpi radialis brevis, so this is the shorter body. You'll notice that arrow is pointing to the red muscle there, not the green one. Uh, this muscle is extending and abducting our hand as well. Next is the extensor carpi ulnaris. We see that this extends our hand, but it actually adducts our hand. Then we have extensor digitorum. Extensor digitorum is gonna originate on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Our insertion are middle and distal phalanges of two through five. Uh, we can see the tendons coming down here and inserting onto those phalanges to help us extend the phalanges, but it's also crossing our wrist, so it's going to extend our hand. And finally, let's look at some deep muscles of our posterior forearm. First, we have our abductor pollicis longus, so we're going to be abducting our thumb. Then we have our extensor pollicis longus. This is going to extend our thumb. And last is our extensor pollicis brevis. And again, this is going to extend our thumb. So you've made it through our muscles. Spend time in open labs, spend time in labs, practice this material. There's a lot to digest here. Good luck studying. We'll see you next week when we go over muscles of the head, neck, and trunk.